Hi everyone, my name is Chi Si Zhao. I'm from University of California, Irvine. I'm working in Microsystems Lab, supervised by Professor Andrew Shikel. In this presentation, I will introduce a hybrid altimeter for aiding pedestrian inertia navigation system. In this presentation, we focus on high estimation for self-contained navigation. Self-contained navigation is important for firefighters or first responders because they often operate in environments where GPS or GNSS signals are degraded. Although alternative signals such as LTE, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi can be used for localization in indoor environments, the assumption that these signals are available might not be realistic in some extreme scenarios. In those scenarios, inertia navigation, uh, inertia navigation systems are the only options. Inertia navigation systems, or INS, integrates IMU measurements to determine orientation and position relative to the initial location. However, the problem with inertia navigation system is that the estimated position drifts because of noisy IMU measurement. For pedestrian navigation, we can use foot multi IMU and apply zero velocity update algorithm or ZAP to improve the navigation accuracy. The idea of ZAP algorithm is based on the fact that when the pedestrian is walking, one gait cycle can be divided into two phases, the stance phase and the swings phase. The stance phase is the period when the foot is on the ground, and the swings phase is the period when the foot is traveling in the air. The ZAP algorithm uses the knowledge that the velocity of the foot is very close to zero during the stance phase. During this period, the algorithm feedback pseudo measurement of zero velocity and calibrates the IMU measurement. This approach has been shown to effectively reduce navigation error. However, there are two drawbacks for the ZAP ADINS. First, this method is based on date reckoning technique, so estimated positions still have small drift. Second, the ZAP added INS cannot be used in elevator. To further improve the navigation accuracy, altimeters are often used in combination with ZAP added INS to provide compensation in vertical direction. INS added by ZAP and altimeters have been shown to bound the error growth in vertical direction and provide accurate, accurate high estimation. For example, in this indoor navigation experiment, the ZAP added INS had an error of 10 meters after 13 minutes of indoor walking using a tactical gray IMU. With aiding from barometers, the error was reduced to 14 centimeters. Therefore, altimeters are needed for self-contained indoor navigation. The most common altimeters are barometers. A barometer estimates absolute height based on measurement of air pressure. However, barometer, barometry altimeters have an undesired property they are subject to surrounding air pressure and temperature changes. For example, if a pedestrian is traveling close to fire, then barometer measurement of heights will be incorrect. As a result, for reliable height estimation in indoor environment, non-barometric altimeters are needed. In this presentation, we present a different type of altimeter for pedestrian navigation. The different type of altimeter that I'm going to introduce is an ultrasonic altimeter. An ultrasonic altimeter is, uh, uses shoe-mounted downward facing range sensors. The range sensor that we use in this presentation is an ultrasonic transducer. The figure on the left hand side shows the lap on shoe platform. The lap on shoe platform was previously developed in UCI Microsystems Lab for evaluating sensor fusion solution for inertia navigation system. To investigate ultrasonic altimeter, we integrated an IMU, a barometer, and the downward facing ultrasonic transducer on the lab on shoe platform. The integrated lab on shoe was used to perform all the experiments in this, in this presentation. Let's focus on the downward facing ultrasonic sensor. The row readouts of the downward facing ultrasonic sensor are the height of the shoe relative to the ground. The figure on the right hand side shows an example of the uh, row ultrasonic output in an experiment where a pedestrian travel on the flat plane and stairs. In this figure, each of the spike corresponds to one step. We can see that the row measurement cannot be used to indicate height of the pedestrian with respect to the initial position. To use the downward facing ultrasonic sensor as an altimeter, our approach is to develop a common filter that simultaneously estimates floor height 
and the height of the shoe relative to the initial position. In our approach, floor height can be measured by observing discontinuities in the ultrasonic sensor output. The discontinuities are generated when a downward facing ultrasonic sensor scans through the edges of stairs. This can be observed in the case of going downstairs. Notice that when we zoom in a spike in the ultrasonic measurement, it is a hump, and the hump corresponds to the measurement obtained when foot is in the, is in the air traveling. We can see that this continuity appears in the first half of the hump in this case. When we go upstairs, this continuity can be also observed. In this case, the discontinuity show up in the second half of the hump. In the case of traveling on a flat plane, the ultrasonic readouts are smooth, no discontinuity existed. A key idea in the common filter for ultrasonic altimeter is that the floor height is updated when the discontinuity is detected in the ultrasonic measurement. The magnitude of the discontinuities are considered as the height of the stairs, and the value are used to update the floor height in our approach. This mechanism allows us to keep track of uh, the floor height when operating on flat plane and stairs. With the ability to measure floor height, our common filter is able to convert shoe height relative to the ground to shoe height relative to the initial position. The plot below shows an output of the common filter, which are measurements of ultrasonic altimeter collected in the indoor walking experiment. X-axis is the elapsed time and Y-axis is the height relative to the starting position. The red curve indicates the height of the shoe. Each of the peak in the red curve correspond to the period when foot is off the ground in the air in the gait cycle. Uh, we can see that the height of the shoe relative to the origin can be obtained. This example shows that the downward facing range sensor can be used as an altimeter on flat plane and stairs. However, indoor navigation usually includes activities of traveling on various terrains. For example, the pictures in this slide shows, shows the experiment field that we often conduct indoor navigation experiments. The terrains included not only flat plains and stairs, but also ramps and elevators. Different methods for estimating height of a pedestrian have different performance on different terrains. In the following slide, I will compare the performance of ZAP ADINS barometer and the ultrasonic altimeter on the four different terrains. Let's start with the flat plains. For ZAP ADINS, uh, estimated position still drift because of uh, because no reference position is used in the algorithm, so its performance is marked as fair. For barometers, the highest resolution of uh, high measurement can be, uh, can be found in a commercial sensor is 10 centimeters, so it is marked as fair as well. For ultrasonic altimeter, the resolution depends on the ultrasonic sensor. We use an ultrasonic sensor that has a resolution of 1 centimeter, so the ultrasonic sensor uh, so the ultrasonic altimeter has the best performance in the case of flat plans, and the performance is marked as good. Next, we go to stairs. The performance in this case is similar to the case of flat plans. ZAP ADINS has the problem of slowly drifting, and barometer has limited resolution. For ultrasonic altimeter, it has a problem of stair high underestimate in this case. We have provided corresponding compensation method in the full paper. After compensation, the ultrasonic altimeter has the best resolution in the case of stairs, so the performance is marked as good. Next is another common indoor terrain, ramps. ZAP added INS is the same as the previous two cases and is marked as fair. Ultrasonic altimeter is not function in this case because on ramps, the downward facing ultrasonic measurements are still smooth and the ultrasonic, need, the ultrasonic altimeter needs discontinuous, discontinuous measurement to measure floor height. When ultrasonic altimeter operates on a uh, ramp, it would estimate that the height of the pedestrian does not change, so the performance is marked as not working. For barometers, although the resolution is still limited, the performance compared to the other two mechanisms are the best on this terrain, so it is marked as good. Last is elevator. 
ZUB added INS is not working in this case because when pedestrian is standing in a moving elevator, the zero velocity detector tends to indicate a stance phase and feedback uh, pseudo measurement of zero velocity. So estimated position do not have variation even if uh, the elevator is moving. So the performance is marked as not working. For ultrasonic altimeter, the estimated height remains the same value because no discontinuous measurement can be observed. So it is marked as not working in this case. Barometer uh, altimeter is the only mechanism that can correctly provide high information, so it is marked as good. In summary, on flat plane and stairs, the ultrasonic altimeter has the best performance. On ramp and elevator, barometric altimeter has the best performance. Therefore, to maximize the performance of indoor navigation, we switch between the two altimeters according to the terrain under, under operation to assist ZAP added INS. We develop a hybrid framework to adaptively switch between the two altimeters. The hybrid framework is realized by a multi-model common filter. The common filter has two modes. In the first mode, the hybrid framework determines that the terrain under operation are flat plans and stairs. In this mode, the hybrid framework puts more weight on ultrasonic altimeter. In the second mode, either ramp or elevator is detected, and the hybrid framework puts more weight on barometric altimeter. To achieve the adaptive selection of modes, detection of terrains are required. Ramp detection are ele and elevated, elevated detection can both be achieved with a full mounting IMU. The details of ramp and elevated detection are presented in the full paper. Here, I will quickly go through the concept. Let's discuss ramp detection first. The detection principle is that during the stance phase in a gate cycle, we assume that a full mounted IMU only experiences gravitational force. During this, during this phase, a pitch angle can be estimated with actuation measurement. The pitch angle of the IMU in the case of flat plane is very close to zero, while the pitch angle in the case of ramp has a value far away from zero. This observation can be used to differentiate ramps and other terrains. As for elevated detection, the detection concept is that when a person with a full mounting IMU is, is standing inside a moving elevator, the direction of the force experienced by the IMU within a period of time is consistent, while in the same length of time, the direction of the force generated by foot, mount, uh, foot dynamics is inconsistent. Uh, the left plot on the right-hand side shows an example of the accelerometer measurement collected by a full mounting IMU when a pedestrian is standing inside an elevator that was going up. The right plot on the right-hand side shows an example of the accelerometer measurement collected during walking. We can see that the accelerometer uh, measurement looks very different in the two cases. In the case of elevator, the starting, the starting of the elevator motion led to z-axis accelerometer readouts all smaller than the, gravi than the gravity. And the ending of the elevator motion led to z-axis accelerometer readouts all larger than the gravity, gravity. In the case of walking, the accelerometer measurement generated by foot motion uh, crosses zero multiple times. We can use a window of one second and calculate the zero crossing of the accelerometer, accelerometer measurement to differentiate motion of elevator and other activities. With the multi-model common filter and the detection technique, the hybrid altimeter adaptively select altimeter measurement based on the detected terrains. Next, I will evaluate the performance of hybrid altimeter. To evaluate the navigation performance of the hybrid altimeter, we perform a series of experiments with a nominal trajectory that include an elevator, a ramp, flat surfaces, and stairs. The reference trajectory is shown in the animation on the left hand side. The total navigation time in each experiment was 210 seconds and the length was 92 meters. We repeated 10 sets of the identical experiment for this series. The subject walked at a speed of, of approximately 40 steps per minute. 
We compared the result of hybrid altimeter with vertical displacement estimated by zap 89 s and a barometer. Example of the high profile of the three navigational solutions are shown in the figure on the right-hand side. Y-axis is the high above the sea level in meters, and X-axis is the elapsed time in seconds. The blue curve is for zap 89 s brown curve is for the barometer, and the green curve is for the hybrid altimeter. During the time instances of 40 seconds to 50 seconds, the subject stood in an elevator that was going down. During 80 seconds to 130 seconds, the subject walked upstairs. During 140 seconds to 160 seconds, the subject walked on a ramp. The experiment started on the second floor and ended on the second floor. Based on the final estimated height of the 10 sets of experiments, we calculate the root mean square error, or RMAC, for each navigational solution. The RMAC of the three methods are summarized in the table. In this series of experiments, the RMAC of zap added INS is 4.15 meters, for barometer is 0.21 meters, and for hybrid altimeter is 0.36 meters. In this experiment, standalone ZAP 18 INS failed to identify the correct floor. Both barometer and the hybrid altimeter correctly identified the floor, and this series of experiments shows that hybrid altimeter has a, compar has a comparable navigational performance to a barometer in terms of RMAC of the destination. However, in these experiments, the temperature and the air pressure were stable. In an, in, in an environment where these two factors are unstable, the hybrid, the hybrid altimeter would have a better accuracy in estimating height. I will demonstrate this argument with an example in the next slide. Let's revisit the experiment where a pedestrian traveled on the same floor and passed by two fire events. The, barometer, the, the barometric altimeter had an incorrect estimation of high of, of, high of 20 meters caused by the first fire, and an error of 13 meters caused by the second fire. We evaluate the robustness of the hybrid altimeter with the same experiment. The hybrid altimeter measurement collected during the experiment is shown in the bottom right plot. Uh, each of the spikes correspond to the shoe height collected during the swing phase in a gate cycle. The flat, uh, the flat line in hybrid altimeter indicates that during the period, the foot was resting on the ground. We can see that the two fire barely affected the function of the hybrid altimeter. This experiment concluded that the hybrid altimeter is more robust than a barometer. In conclusion, in this presentation, we work on the problem that barometer is subject to temperature and air pressure changes. Our approach is to use downward facing ultrasonic sensing modality as an alternative for altimeter measurement. The ultrasonic altimeter is limited to operation on flat plants and stairs. To account for indoor terrains, such as flat plants, ramp, stairs, and elevator, we develop a hybrid framework that adaptively switch between the barometers and ultrasonic altimeter. Then we demonstrate it with a series of experiments that the RMAC of the hybrid altimeter is comparable to a barometer. Lastly, we show that the hybrid altimeter is more robust than a barometer. This work was founded by National Institute of Standard and Technology. Thank you for participation.